Has this ever happened to you? You take a test and fail it miserably, but then you look back on that failure as one of your happiest memories. You might even cry tears of joy because of it. Well, this might seem like an unlikely scenario, but it's actually quite common when I give people the test that I'm about to give you. I'd like you to take a minute and answer these questions in your mind. Number one, how would you say the word stick backwards? Number two, how many individual sounds are in the word cabbage? And number three, how would you read this nonsense word? Now, if you struggled a little bit with knowing that stick spoken backwards is kits, that there are five sounds in cabbage, and if you had a little trouble reading this nonsense word, then you're not alone. Statistically, up to about 20% of you would have those same challenges. And I can almost guarantee you that if you didn't struggle with those types of questions, then you know someone and maybe even love someone who would. These kinds of questions were designed to screen people for dyslexia. Dyslexia, a neurobiological condition that spans the globe, is characterized by difficulties in accurate word recognition, spelling, and decoding. In essence, people with dyslexia process language differently. Two of the most common signs of dyslexia are trouble with spelling, and difficulty reading unknown words. To read a word with accuracy and confidence, a dyslexic learner must understand the underlying why of the word. Once they comprehend the internal dynamics of the word, reading becomes accessible, whether the word is familiar or not. Think of dyslexics as deep sea divers requiring more depth to navigate through language. I'd like to demonstrate how delving into the depth of a word can aid a dyslexic in understanding it. I'm going to teach you some reading patterns or keys so that you can experience this type of deep dive for yourself. The first reading key is what I call the tap to rule. Here's how it works. When you encounter a vowel, examine or tap the next two letters. If either one of them is another vowel, then the vowel that you are on will likely pronounce its name or make its long sound. Conversely, if those next two letters are consonants, then the vowel that you were on will likely produce its short sound. So I'd like for you to try applying the tap two rule to our nonsense word. So since that first O does have a vowel in the next one or two spots, it will say its name, O. Since that A in the middle does not have another vowel in the next one or two positions, it will not say its name. It will say its regular, common, short sound, A. Ah. But what about the A at the end? There's no letters after it at all. This brings us to another reading key. A's at the end say a. Uh. Consider words like America, China, Panda, Santa, Nebraska, Alicia. The list goes on. So that A being at the end says a. Uh. So now that you understand the underlying why of this word and what's happening inside of it, I'd like for you to try reading it again. As you can see, the word is plotanfra. Now, reading an unknown word this way is not only achievable, but a pleasant experience when you understand how to do it. This is what individuals with dyslexia need. This is what my own daughter needed, only I didn't know she was dyslexic. And the most troubling part was that I, her own mother, was a professional reading specialist. Yet I had no idea why my bright and capable daughter struggled a little bit with reading and spelling. I had studied reading and language arts in college. I taught it every day in the classroom. Yet I had no understanding of what dyslexia was or how they needed to learn. It wasn't until after I received additional education and became certified as a dyslexia specialist that I realized, oh my goodness, she has dyslexia. And not only that, but almost every child that I was teaching in my reading support classroom was also probably dyslexic. What I didn't know hurt me, and it hurt them. 
Because of my ignorance, I was not providing the kind of instruction that my students and even my own daughter needed to succeed. But that all changed as soon as I became aware of dyslexia. It felt like a whole new universe of possibilities opened up, allowing me to operate with enhanced knowledge and better tools. The solution was surprisingly straightforward. Screening for dyslexia and tailored instruction focused on the why of the words were the keys. Consider this, if even a reading specialist like me had no understanding of dyslexia, it raises the question, of how many others out there, parents, teachers, individuals with dyslexia themselves are navigating dyslexia without a grasp of what's happening. Take one of my oldest students, Gertie. It was Gertie that I referred to at the beginning who cried those happy tears after I tested her and she realized that she was dyslexic. She was 75 years old when I screened her and do you know what she told me after she got those results? She said, that out of all of the happy memories she has collected over her lifetime, the happiest memory was realizing that she was not dumb. She was dyslexic. That was her favorite life memory. That was why she cried those happy tears, because she realized that she was smart after all. And she's not alone. I'm currently teaching hundreds of adults, intelligent adults, whose lives are changing for the better because they're now reading. One of my students, Blair, told me that now that he is a reader, everything in his life is improving, and he is now in control of his life. He said that even his health is improving because he's now able to read the labels on the food that he buys. He said everything, his life, his family, his job, his health, is changing for the better because words have become unlocked. But adults like these, looking back, and maybe some of you as well can recall, that as young students, when it was time for oral reading in the classroom, they often felt that familiar horrible dread that came from the fear of humiliation of being forced to read out loud in front of their friends. They knew that when they wrote, they often used words that they knew how to spell rather than words that actually reflected their intelligent thoughts. They knew that even though they could read many words, when it came time to spell those same words, they had to guess every time or rely on spell check, which left them even more confused because those words all look so similar. They knew that they often felt less than their peers, less capable, less competent, less intelligent, just simply less. What they unfortunately did not know is that dyslexia has no connection to intelligence, none. As a matter of fact, it often incorporates incredible talents and strengths and gifts that should be celebrated, such as beautiful creativity, exceptional interpersonal skills, strong leadership abilities, Richard Branson, a visionary entrepreneur with dyslexia, built a global business empire. He put it beautifully when he said, dyslexia is just a different way of looking at the world, a different way of processing information, and a different way of coming up with great ideas. And many of you may discover that it's actually a superpower that can take you to great heights. It's time for us to collectively embrace this superpower shatter stereotypes and foster a world where every person with dyslexia can reach their full potential. We need to lock arms and open mouths to spread awareness so everyone can thrive without limits. We each know someone with undiagnosed dyslexia who simply needs the key to unlock the world of words. Awareness is the first key, and it has just been handed to you. Thank you.